जय राधा माधव कुंजा बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरिवरधारी गोपी जन बल्लभ गिरिवरधारी सूर नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन चसूर नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन जामुन तीर बनाचारी जामुना तीरा न चारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन बल्ला भागिरीवर धारी गोपी जन वल्लभ भागिरीवर धारी जसूर नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन जासुर नंदना ब्रज जन रंजन जासुर नंदना ब्रज जन रंजन जमुना तीरा नचारी जमुना तीरा नचारी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी श्री श्री राम आरभ की श्री श्री राधा गिरिधारी की जाय सीता राम की जाय जाय ओम विष्णु पाद परम हंस पुरी ब्राज जशोदर श्री श्री महाजारिंद भक्ति विनांद स्वामी शिल प्रोपार की जाय जय ओम विष्णु पाद परम हंस पुरी ब्राज गजाशोदर श्री श्री महाराज गए शिल भक्ति सरांत सरस्वती गोस महाराज प्रोपार की जाय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जाय Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai, the appearance day of Lord Ramachandra ki jai. Go, Rabbi all glory assembled devotees, all glory assembled devotees, all glory assembled devotees, all glories, all glory, Sisi Guru and Sri Guranga. So this morning we're reading from the Shrimad Bhagavatam, ninth canto. It's chapter ten. It's a summary of the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra. Uh, I chose this verse as an introduction. 
because today is the appearance day of Lord Ramachandra. And I will be reading through this chapter and at different times stopping to discuss a few points. So that's our <coughs> class for today. It's the ninth, ninth uh, canto, chapter 10. It's called The Pastimes of Lord Ramachandra. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we have a fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, text 8 on the board. Paritranaya Sadunam Vinashaya Chaduskritam Dharma Samstapanartaya Sambhavami Yuge Yuge Paritaranaya Sadunam Vinashaya Chaduskritam Dharma Samstapanartaya Sambhavami yuge yuge Paritranaya sadhunam Vinashaya chaduskritam Dharma samstapanarthaya Sambhavami yuge yuge Paritranaya sadhunam Vinashaya chatuskritam Dharma samstapanartaya Sambhavami yuge yuge Anyone like to chant? Word for word. Paritranaya. For the deliverance. Sadunam. Of the devotees. Vinashaya. For the annihilation. Cha. And. Duskritam. Of the miscreants. Dharma. Principles of religion. Samstapana artaya. To reestablish. Sambhavami. I do appear, yuge, millennium, yuge, after millennium. Translation, to deliver the pious and to annihilate the miscreants as well as to reestablish the principles of religion, I myself appear millennium after millennium. Omagyanti marandasya gananjana salakaya chakshul unminitam taismai sri gurave namaha sri chaitanya manobhistam stapitam dena bhutale swayam rupa kadamayam dadati svapadandikam sri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda sri daita gadadhar shiva sri gaur bhakti brinda hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare Banchika Padru Bascha, keep us in do be a cha, but it on on Bhavani, Bill Vaishnavi, Bill Namo Namaha. So, with your good, your blessings and good wishes, I'll try to say a few words. 
So this particular verse, there's a few verses here that are in, in, in uh, an answer to a question by Arjun, because Krishna is saying that uh, this particular science of Krishna consciousness, he's instructed it, uh, not just like yesterday, but uh, a few million years ago. <laughs> he said, I instructed this imperishable science of yoga to the sun god, and then Arjun said, wait a second, how is that possible? How is that possible? Just like if you say, you, Bhagavad, you've been distributing books a long time, but if you say, I distributed a book to George Washington just before he crossed the Delaware. How is that possible? Well, I don't know. Sankatan devotees can do amazing things, but wait a second. So Arjun's saying, how is that possible? And then Krishna's making, the, there's a few series of verses here that uh, Krishna, he said, many, many births you and I have passed. I can remember all of them, but you cannot. And he's saying this, yada, yada, hi dharmasya, that actually Krishna is coming over and over and over again in his many different incarnations whenever there's a decline in religious principles. And this verse today, which is off-quoted, this, uh, to deliver the pious, to annihilate the miscreants, to reestablish the principles of religion, I appear millennium after millennium. So Krishna's coming again and again and again. And what is the benefit of that? That's verse 9. This janma karma chame divyam evam yoveti tattvataha tvakta deham punar janma naiti mam eti sarjuna. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not upon leaving the body take his birth again in this material world but attains my eternal abode. So Krishna is coming again and again and again for the deliverance of the fallen souls. He comes himself, he sends his representatives in so many different ways. And you'll see that these three activities are always performed by the incarnations of the Lord in varying degrees. Uh, to deliver the devotees, the sadhus, to annihilate miscreants who are harassing the devotees, and to reestablish what is real dharma, dharma samstha pranataya. He comes again and again and again. Because why does he have to come again and again and again? Everything, just in the course of time, everything is forgotten or, or destroyed, falls apart. It's the law of entropy. It attacks everything in this material world from empires to skyscrapers to religion, our brains, our memory. <laughs> is anyone experiencing entropy with their memory? <laughs> So that's just the nature of this material world. So Krishna has to come again and again and again and again to reestablish all of these principles. Uh, and this is how you know an incarnation. I remember many, many years ago, someone came to the temple and they gave us a flyer. It was a picture of a gentleman in South India, dark skin, so on. And he was saying, he's Kalki Avatar. And I was, and I asked him, well, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Paritana, you know, all these three things. I said, hey, what kind of sadhus has he been delivering? And what kind of miscreants is he annihilating? And what kind of principles of religion? Because Kalki's got a, you know, pretty good description there in the Bhagavatam. And um, the conversation ended right there. But it was quite interesting. It was a picture of some businessman in South India who they were following as the Kalki avatar. I don't know why. So... But this is how, this is the, hmm? I guess. <laughs> so the point is that the incarnations of the Lord are described in detail. And today is the appearance day of Lord Ramachandra. And of course, the Ramayan is there. And there are different Ramayans, the Valmiki Ramayan. And who is the one, the other one in the court? No, who is that other one? I think it's Vaisham Panya. Yeah, he has a Ramayan also. And his Ramayan is, um, stresses more that Ram is the supreme personality of Godhead than Valmiki's. Not that Valmiki does, but it's quite, there's a little difference in the two Ramayans. But here in the Bhagavatam, because uh, um, Sugadeva uh, Goswami, uh, he's, he's saying that uh, you, you already know the pastimes of Lord Ram. He appeared in Treta Yuga well before uh, this gathering of Maharaj Prikshan on the battlefield, uh, 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 on the bank of the Ganga. So he decided to give just a synopsis. Otherwise, how long would the Bhagavatam be if he took the time to tell the whole Ramayana over again, right? So he just highlighted the different 
uh, parts of the of the pastime of the Lord. So uh, I'm just going to read a few of these verses and talk a little bit about about that. So it says here, uh, text two of this chapter, being prayed for by the demigods, the supreme personality of God had the absolute truth himself directly appeared with his expansion and expansions of the expansion. Their holy names were Rama, Lakshman, Bharat, and Shatugna. These celebrated incarnations thus appeared in four forms as the sons of Maharaj Dasarath. O King Parikit, the, the transcendental activities of Lord Ramachandra have been described by great saintly persons who have seen the truth. Because you have heard again and again about both Lord Ramachandra and the husband of the, about Lord Ramachandra, the husband of Sita, I shall describe these activities only in brief. Please listen. This one verse, next verse, is bright, tells the whole story of the Ramayana. Listen to this, all in one verse. To keep the promise of his father intact, Lord Ramachandra immediately gave up the position of king and accompanied by his wife, Mother Sita, wandered from one forest to another on, on his lotus feet, which are so delicate that they were unable to bear even the touch of Sita's palms. The Lord was also accompanied by Hanuman, king of the monkeys, or by another monkey, Sugriva, and by his own younger brother, <coughs> excuse me, Lord Lakshmana, both of whom gave him relief from the fatigue of wandering in the forest. Having cut off the nose and ears of Serpanaka, thus disfiguring her, the Lord was separated from Mother Sita. He therefore became angry, moving his eyebrows and thus frightening the ocean, who then allowed the Lord to construct a bridge to cross the ocean. Subsequently, the Lord entered the kingdom of Ravana to kill him like a devouring forest fire. May that Supreme Lord Ramachandra give us all protection. So if anyone wants to know the Ramayana real quick, just read them this verse. <laughs> There's the whole thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me see if it goes back to that, because that's what I wanted to. Okay, okay. We're going to read two more verses and then a little bit of a uh, elaboration. In the, arena of the sac of the arena of the sacrifice performed by Vishramitra, Lord Ramachandra, the king of Ayodhya, killed many demons, rakshashas, and uncivilized men who wandered at night in the middle of the, in the mode of darkness. May Lord Ramachandra, who killed the demons in the presence of Lakshman, be kind enough to protect, give us protection. O King, the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra were wonderful, like those of a baby elephant. What's so uh, wonderful about a baby elephant? I would say it's charming. <coughs> Cute. A lot easier to bathe than the big one. It's interesting why he picked the baby elephant. Okay. In the assembly where Mother Sita was to choose her husband in the midst of the heroes of this world, he broke the bow belonging to Lord Shiva. This bow was so heavy that it was carried by 300 men. But Lord Ramachandra bent and strung it and broke it in the middle just as a baby elephant breaks a stick of sugar cane. Thus the Lord achieved the hand of Mother Sita who was equally as endowed with transcendental qualities of form, beauty, behavior, age, and nature. Indeed, she was a goddess of fortune who constantly rests on the chest of the Lord. While returning from Sita's home, after gaining her at the assembly of competitors, Lord Ramachandra met Parashuram. Although Parashuram was very proud, having rid the earth of the royal order 21 times, he was defeated by the Lord, who appeared to be a Kshatriya of the royal order. Carrying out the order of his father, who was bound by a promise to his wife, Lord Ramachandra left behind his kingdom, opulence, friends, well-wishers, residents, and everything else, just as a liberated soul gives up his life, and he went to the forest with Sita. So, uh, one, one point also as far as the avatars of the Lord, there is a, a branch of theology called deism, and the idea is that God created this world but he no longer has any uh, uh, attachment to it or, or connection with it. It's kind of like a, they say, it, like a, someone makes a watch, puts it on the mantelpiece, and just goes away. It's just going on. So we're kind of all le left to our own. But that's not the philosophy of a Bhagavad Gita, or Bhagavatam. Actually, Krishna is, of course, within the heart of every living entity. Ishwara Sarvabhutanam Hridesha Arjuna Tishtati. He's in every atom. And he's coming again and again. That's the avatar. 
Krishna comes again and again and again and again. He's actually very, very much concerned about the deliverance of the fallen souls in this material world. He wants every single soul to come back home, back to Godhead. And his different incarnations are there. And they don't just come once and that's it. You know, you ask someone to help out, I'll give you five minutes. But someone who's always there, always there, you can call them anytime, 24-7. What do you call a person like that? Hmm? Dependable and merciful and very close to you. You can't just call anyone, right? Can you call anyone at 12 o'clock at night and have them solve a problem for you? Do you have anyone you can call? Would anyone here like to volunteer to be Sankashan's midnight call, part, part buddy? Like that. We should all have someone we can call, right? That means very close. Not everyone, but you, you know, there are some people, they can call 24-7 and you'll be there. So Krishna is like that in an umpteenth degree. For every single living entity, doesn't matter how many people call him, he'll be there. Krishna will answer our prayers. So that's the avatar. Now, this particular scene that's being recounted, obviously I'm not going to get through the whole, just even though it's a short, maybe 50 verses, I won't get through the whole story. But this is the, the, this, oh, the central theme of the mind is, is, is this banishment of Ram. Everything seems to be going on pretty nicely. He's, he's, he, uh, he's an incarnation. He's Vishnu himself, and his brothers are expansions and answered all the prayers of his parents. They appeared. Everyone's so happy in the palace. And in due course of time, Dasarath Maharaj, feeling he's getting old, and instead of hanging on to everything like our politicians do, someone told me yesterday that Biden is in his 80s. And the other one, I don't know if we're allowed to mention his name in this, this building, he's close. That's old. I was thinking, wow, they need younger people. That's pretty old, you know? And uh, the Vedic system, as you get old, before you get that old, when you have no energy left, you retire to the forest and uh, finish your life in self-realization. So Maharaj Dasarath was feeling that. Uh, very strongly, he had a very strong sense that I should turn over the kingdom to Lord to Ram, my son Ram. He's the oldest. That's that's natural, and it just so happened that Bharat, the the son of Kaikeyi, was out of town at the time, so the news went out. He actually he consulted his ministers, and they said, "Oh, it's very auspicious time. Let's just do it." So he set out the announcement. The next day is going to be the coronation. And uh, everyone was so happy except for one person. She, she might have been the only person in the kingdom who was unhappy about the whole thing. You know who that was? Okay. Not yet. Was her, uh, mantra. Mantara. Or Mantara. Mantara or Mantara. She was a, a maidservant in the palace. And she kind of worked. Okay, well, she definitely, did you get the name after this pastime or before? Maybe she worked in the kitchen first, stirring things, and then she really became Maha Mantra by stirring up this uh, situation in the palace. And uh, it says that she, before uh, Kaikeyi, she, she was the second wife of Dasarath, the prettier of the two, and she kind of rose because of that in her status to be more important to him than Koshoya, the first queen, the mother of Ram. But still, there was very little enmity between the, the two queens, and everything was, and they and they loved each other's children the same. But Mantara, she until uh, until Kaikei was accepted as the principal queen, she was kind of an insignificant maidservant in the palace, and of course, people made fun of her because of her looks. She was a hunchback, like that. But when she when Kaikei became the most important queen, no one said a word to her because she rose to such a high position in the palace, being the confidant of the queen. So when she heard about it, she started thinking, wait a second, if Ram becomes king, then Koshoya will rise up, and who knows what they're going to do to Kaikei and Bharat. In my position, again, I'll be just an insignificant servant in the palace if I'm even lucky. So she started thinking like this. So she approached Kaikei and uh, started telling her, 
you know, wait a second, you know, everyone's happy in the palace, but you're the last person who should be happy because you know what's going to happen? When Ram becomes the king, Bharat may be exiled. You know, he may be killed. And you will become an insig the, the, the lower of the two queens. All of your status will be lost. So what are you going to do about it? And first Kaike was saying, no, come on, that's not true. Bharat loves Ram, and we all love Ram, and then she kept pushing and pushing and pushing, and then finally she turned. This is, called, this is an instance of what they call a disinformation. It's quite popular in political circles, disinformation. What do they call it now? There's another word for it. Misinformation. Alternative facts, like right? That's what they is. So that people, they, they, they're called, uh, actually one of my, my daughter, oldest daughter wanted to be, was training to be this at one time. Call it a, a spin, spin, spin doctor. You know, like you just write things up and put a spin on things. So uh, anyways, we, we know what happened, that she said the way to solve all this is to take advantage of two boons that Maharaj, your husband, the king, gave you a long, long time ago because you saved his life in a battle. And he said, I'll, I'll ask you for, you know, just some other time, some other time uh, you, can, you can ask for benedictions. I'll just, I'll wait. So she said, first, Bar will be the king, and Ram will be exiled to the forest because you can't have him around because it, it won't work. And she said, okay, I'm going to do it. And uh, then Dasarath, at the end of the day, came to visit her in the evening, and she asked for those two boons, and that practically killed Dasarath. In fact, later it did. And uh, she asked for those boons, and of course the, the, the level of turmoil and emotion in the palace was indescribable. Undescribable or indescribable or both? Indescribable. It's just unbelievable. And then, uh, you know, next morning Ram comes and guess what? He's told, uh, by the way, you got to go. And uh, so the point I want to bring up here is, is Lord Ramachandra is known in that incarnation for Dharma Samstar Panartaya, being the emblem of the perfect king, perfect Dharma in every single situation. And this particular scene here, just before his um, banishment to the forest. Now, banishment was not a, a light thing. There's different punishments for criminals. The final one is you're executed. The one just below that is banishment. So it's pretty heavy if you're banished from a kingdom. It's just the one step below being executed. It's quite insulting, and especially if you're innocent. So anyways, uh, how did he react to this? So the reactions of different personalities in the palace, the different personality, you know, it's, 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 it's quite telling because if it happened to us, Rijamani, 14 years you're banished from the temple. Like that. What? Wait a second, I, what, what did I do, and who told you that, and you know? So, and those, those different emotions came out but in different personalities, but it's ascribed here that when Lord Ramachandra uh, approached Kaikeya, you'd think they'd be very upset and, and um, yell at her or something, but he said, you know, I thought you were very, I was very, very dear to you as dear to you as Bharat. She said, you are. He said, well, if I was, then you could have just come to me and asked me, could I just give the kingdom to Bharat? Not like, how dare you? You know, I'm the oldest son. Don't you know who I am? I'm the supreme personality of God. Ed. You know, no. He, that's what he said to diffuse the whole thing. He said, you could have just asked me personally and I would have given the kingdom to Bharat. Yeah. And then Maharaj Dasarath, of course, he's in the process of leaving his body due to separation. And he was just saying, this is a wonderful opportunity for me to, to uh, what is the word, uphold uh, the, the, the family line because every single king in our line is known for fulfilling their promise. Never telling, always fulfilling their promise as a kshatriya. And if I were to disobey your order, then there would be infamy for you. 
So this is a, an opportunity for me to make sure your status is always glorified in our line of kings. So I will accept that. And uh, of course, Lakshman was, he wanted to say, you can't do this. We're, I'll, I'll, I'll help you. We'll, we'll, we'll have a coup here. We'll take over and everyone will be on our side. And he was, he wanted to actually kill Kaikei, all these different things. And he, he, he spoke to him very calmly also that you can't do this. This is our father who's asking us to do this and, and uh, so on and so on and so on. And, and the only uh, thing that Lakshman finally asked for, let me come with you. Because he, he said, no, you should stay here and, and protect, you know, Bharat. And so I said, no, I want to come with you. He said, okay, you can come with me. He didn't want to, like, push him too far because Lakshman was very difficult to appease. He said, okay, you can come with me. And then he goes, and Kaushalya also is beside herself because she's thinking, if you leave, what, what's going to happen to me? And Kaikei takes over, and she doesn't really like me. I don't know in the history of the world there's been co-wives who really liked each other. Is, is there any story of they really got along well? And it's like, there's always maybe a little bit of tension. You know, if you take the tour there in, in uh, Jaipur, Man Singh's palace, anyone taking that tour? Yeah, at least the tour guide we had told us that he had, because he had a few wives, and he had these secret pack passages, because, uh, you know, he had to, like, I'm going to go see this wife and that wife, you don't want to make it public, because uh, co-wives have a uh, history of not getting along too well for obvious reasons. So uh, that's why Lord Ramachandra took the vow of Ekapatni, just one wife, because you have more than one wife, there's a lot of problems. So uh, where was I? He went to see Sita, right? That's where I am, and uh, told her what was going on. And she said, uh, well, how can I stay? No, no, Kosholya, I'm sorry. It was Kosholya went to see her, and she was thinking, if Kaikei comes, who knows? She doesn't really like me and what my position will be, and... And Lord Ramachandra said, actually, you need to stay for your husband, for our father, Maharaj Dasarath. Such a difficult situation for him. You need to be by his side. He needs you like that. So he deflected the whole thing. Don't worry about me. You just need you to stay with. And as far as Mother Sita, he told her, of course, I have to go. And she said, I'm going to go with you. She said, you can't come with me. Don't you understand what the forest is like? All these, uh, it's very, very dangerous. You got, it's not, you know, besides wild animals, you got rakshashas. You know, just like sometimes. Then they just have something in the news a few weeks ago. It's two brothers and one got attacked by a, a mountain lion. Remember that? It was in the news in Colorado or something. Got killed. Two boys, young men. They're hiking and one got, they got attacked by a mountain lion. One was killed. So, you know, mountain lion. Was it Orange County? That's where it was? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So can you imagine having rakshashas? <laughs> Have to worry about them and all these. And, 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 he, and she said, well, actually, I would be much more happy if I could just go with you. He, she, he said no again. And then she said to him, you know, my father gave me in charity, you know, gave me to you, you know, Kanyadan, because you're a very, very brave king and you could protect me. So what kind of a king are you if you can't protect me in the forest? She's smart. And he said, okay, you win. <laughs> You're coming. <laughs> so and, and, and the, the point is, and there's more details of this, but all these different uh, re uh, responses from, from Ramachandra showed perfect dharma. He knew exactly what to say and what dharma was. And for those who don't have that understanding, it can get very, very messy because it's a very high emotional, unfair. Is there, uh, of course, Krishna's arranging everything, so in, a, in these pastimes, there's nothing unfair. It, in human society, it would appear to be unfair, but he's orchestrating this whole thing. Why? To bring out such intense emotions in his devotees, because this is uh, vipalambra, uh, intense separation. In fact, the separation was so great when, when Ram, Lakshman, and Sita on that chariot were leaving the city. Guess what? Who was following them? The whole city. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, says, wait a second. This doesn't look like a banishment to me. The whole city is following him. Stop, stop. So Ram had to tell everyone to go back. They, they couldn't bear a separation. They're just, oh, we're all going. 
And I think they actually went for some time the first night, many of them, and then in the middle of the night, he, had, he escaped and he had the cherry driver drive his wheels in a particular way. It looked like he was going back to Ayodhya, and then they went another way. So when they, all the citizens woke up in the morning, they thought, oh, he's gone back, and they, he tricked them, and they all headed back. But uh, such intense feelings of separation, imminent separation, that the whole town uh, just emptied out to follow him into the forest. So we're all going too. We're all going also. So... Uh, as all the pastimes are here. Okay, I'll just, because we're on this topic, this little, this pastime, what happens when Bard comes home? Because in, in Kaikeyi's mind, there's the, there's the real Bard and there's an imagined Bard. In her mind was an imagined Bard that she was thinking, she, to her defense, motherly affection. She was somehow or other convinced by Mantra that, you know, if Ram becomes the king, your son is going to be in danger. So only to help her son, she's saying, just to help my son, Bharat, I'll make this arrangement, cash in these promises, and so on. So when he comes back, he notices, wait a second, this, the whole city looks very, very sad, and something's going on, and he goes to the palace, and of course he goes to her palace first, mom, and what's going on? And she's, oh, I'm so happy you're here, I have such good news for you. We've banished Ram, and you're going to be the king. <laughs> well, uh, guess what just popped her bubble in a big way. The imagined bard that he'd be so happy he's come back, or his mother's you know got the kingdom for him, and and he he was very very upset, very very upset, and and just beside himself. And how could you do this? And and uh, actually he disowned her right on the spot. He said, I just, you're not my mother anymore. How could you do such a thing? And then he went to see Ram, and, 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 and das, I think Dasarath by then had may have passed away. I'm not sure. But uh, everything just, you know, turned around. And then, so what, what does Lord Ram say to Bharat? Oh, okay, well, just, uh, okay, it was a mistake. Well, I'll, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be the king, and, you know, let's just, just pretend this never happened. He said, I can't do that. He said, we have to fulfill the promise of our father. We have to do that. And I'm sure you'll do just fine. And uh, I'm going to the forest. And no, let's just switch places. Bard said, "I'll take. I'll. I'll be the one in exile." And he said, "No, no, no. It's just fine." And Bard's humility was such that he was actually living out the 14 years he was living outside the city, dressed in bark, tree bark, just like. Ramachandra. In fact, you know, these pictures actually dress in a kind of a tree bark. They weren't in saris and dhotis. It was a kind of cl like that. And that's one thing that Ram told Sita. You're not going to be happy wearing a tree bark sari. It's pretty rough. Pun on pun, pun there. It's rough, rough wearing that kind of stuff. But uh, Bharat took a matted hair. He was living like he was in the forest, simply lying instead of in a royal palace on kusha grass for a mat. And what was his, he had one meal a day. And what was that meal? Yes, highly recommended. And he never sat on the throne, he put Ram's shoes on the throne. Yes, because he, he took those back. When they did meet out there, you know, he came and tried to talk him to come back. He said, at least give me your shoes. And he put his shoes and, as, as a regent <coughs> for 14 years. So these are all, um, I mean, to take the time to study and read Ramayan, so much of it is about Dharma in every single situation, whatever whoever Ram encountered, Sugriva Hanuman was brought up in class the other day, Mamoga about Bali being shot from behind a tree, but that was completely dharmic because he had stolen someone else's wife and usurped their kingdom. He was a criminal, so he'd be killed any way he wanted to kill him. And he agreed when he's lying there, he said, you're right, Ram. I, I, you know, I should have been shown any mercy or, or Kshatriya code at all. I, was, I stole some of my brother's wife and took the kingdom. So, um, 
or how he even uh, in, uh, interacted with Ramana. At the very, very end there, you know, he completely forgave him for everything he did. In fact, he even told him, he said, you know, if you return Sita, I'll forgive you for everything. And he meant that. I'll completely forgive you. After all the harassment and pain you've got, I'll forgive you completely. And then, no, no hard feelings. And then even when Ravana fell, he was dying on the battlefield, you know, and he, and he passed away, so he forgave him. And he asked Babishan to do the funeral rites, even though he was such a horrible person. He said, he's the soul, the soul is pure, you know, just, just you know, complete dharmic. What is dharma, what's not dharma, was exemplified in, in unlimited ways in the pastimes of Lord Ram. Even it's a whole discussion, which, because it's late, we won't go into it, the banishment of Sita <laughs> at the end of the Ramayan. What's that all about? How is that dharma? That's a, that's a hard one for people to accept. And how is that dharma? That's another topic, another class. So we just encourage everyone as much as possible today to hear and read about the pastime of Lord Ramachandra. And in the very beginning, the verses we quoted, it was saying he's, he'll protect his devotees. In fact, there's a famous verse quoted in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, but that uh, Lord Ramachandra says, anyone who just once sincerely says, I'm your devotee, Lord Ramachandra says, I'll protect him. I'll save him. So he's very, very, very kind and very, very merciful. So any questions or comments or pastimes anyone wants to bring up? Yes. Well, if nobody else has a question, let's see. I wanted to ask you if you could just briefly explain the morality of uh, banishing Sita. No, I, let's see if others have more. They may have more immediate questions. I'm just saying, if you've got time, I'd like to hear what you have, you know, your... Does anyone else have a question? Yes, saved. Thank you. <laughs> well, it has to be because it has to go on for everyone oh. to hear. I remember reading the Ramayan to my daughter when she was very young, and it got to the part where Ram was leaving the city, and the citizens were following. And it said they were so aggrieved to see him go that their tears were mixing with the dust of the wheels of the chariot. And my daughter said, Mommy, I can't hear anymore. She goes, I cannot listen to this. Oh, so she never made it past. I mean, she's heard the Ramayana that she grew up, but I might have started reading it to her too young because I thought it was such a beautiful story. But she said, Mommy, she started crying when she heard that their tears were mixing with a... So to have these feelings, we rarely as humans in Kali Yuga have these deep feelings. Like when my husband goes off camping, rarely do I cry when his... His Jeep is leaving the driveway, the <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> <In> the driveway. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, these are it, really it. intense, deep emotions that they were feeling. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Okay, as far as <clears throat> I haven't... Uh, that question because it's it is it, it, no it it's it's uh, I don't I don't know if I can a do the answer justice in the sense that there's actually a whole article by Chaitanya Charan, it's in his book and it's appeared in Back to Godhead magazine you know different sections of the Ramayana and how to you know in in kind of analyzing them, and I remember a very long lecture given by Bir Krishna Maharaj about that and he was just saying he this one part of the Ramayana he can never accept can't accept it. He says, how could, how could Ram do such a thing? You know, um, of course, we know it's Dharma. It may seem to be completely offsided because the story is that uh, Lord Ram would go from time to time disguised around the city just to see what the citizens are thinking of him. They didn't have Fox News and C CNN back then and everyone trying to figure out and give, you, know, you had to find out yourself. And uh, they overheard some... Was a washerman or something criticizing. criticizing? You know, his wife was gone for the for a night, and could, you, you know, maybe Lord Ram would uh, have a problem with his Sita going for so long. But 
you know, you can't be like that, it's improper, and so on, and so on, and so on. Even though Sita's chastity was tested when she was rescued from Ravana, and the false Sita, the whole story of the false Sita coming out of, the, you know, uh, going into the fire and the real Sita coming out, so there's no question of any impropriety. But still, because of this one complaint, this is what Lord Ram decided it's best that, you know, if the citizens are doubting the king, that's not good. Doubting his, his dharma, dharmic, you know, personality and his righteousness is not good. So therefore, let's banish her. And she went to the ashram of Valmiki with her two sons and so on. Um, so on one hand, you can say, that's a little bit uh, you know, over the top, you know, over the top. And of course, uh, so I, I'm going to open that up. Dravida Prabhu, what's your, just because my memory is not so sharp on remembering exactly some of the points that were brought out. Of course, it's Leela and pastimes, but what's your understanding? Microphone. It's, it's almost the most shocking thing that could be because all that effort, you know, the whole Ramayan is the, the, the glory of how, you know, he had so much uh, faithfulness to Sita and she was protected because of the curse of, against Rakshas, against Ram. So she was just lamenting there at the Ashoka Grove, you know, and the whole thing. And and then uh, the war is fought, so many casualties, and she's rescued, and they get on the plane, and they go back, and Ram is is uh, coronated, and that's the end, right? I mean, <laughs> happily ever and then, after. And, and then and then this happens, and it's like, wow, you know. And I I just think, what what would the how did the uh, residents of of um, Yoda feel about it? You know, I I, I don't. I'm not really a student of the Ramayana so much. Maybe that's in there. But it just seems like, really? It's quite a, quite a twist, this. But I guess it's, what, you know, it's, it's a, a sign of the, the, the uh, importance of what we call dharma, you know, to, that, that everything, everything has to be looked just right. It's such a contrast to today. You know, today, I mean, the insults are coming from all directions to everybody, by everybody. It's, you know, it's just insane. And you can see how destructive it is. For yes. people consciousness, so so the, this is uh, you know Ram holding up the the, the uh, Dharma that the, the king has to be beyond uh, suspicion. Maharaj. Yeah, the, what I was thinking, and I've heard from others, that the whole one of the main themes, essential, you know, the thread that the whole ba Ramayan rests on is the importance of doing duty, you know, sacrificing for others above yourself. And you have a leader who obviously loves Sita and, you know, that whole thing. But he was willing to give up everything for the satisfaction of the citizens. And that's really the mood. We often see parents, good parents, give up what they want for the sake of their kids. My mother would take us to the beach. Some kid would always drop their sandwich in the sand. And, you know, my mother would wind up, oh, just take mine, you know? <laughs> Seeing the children happy is their happiness and their duty. So even the, the fact that Ram, the affection was so strong for Sita amongst everyone, and yet he gave all that up, accepted the pain of it, as a service to his citizens. I mean, imagine if our leaders today, I mean, they're all trying to think how to make as much money. The corruption in the American government is profound. It's not just other countries. Johnson went in, and I think he was worth $5 million. And when he got out, he was what, worth $200 million and on television stations all across America. How did that happen? So, I mean, there's so many examples. So that's the, the way I r remedy it in my mind. As there's so many extreme examples, see, he didn't have to go to the forest. You know, Vibhishan didn't have to give up his comfortable position. 
Dasarath didn't have to keep his word. So there's so many Bharat and so that theme of duty. So even Lord Ram was willing to give up Sita for the service, of, so all the citizens would be satisfied. So that's how I take it. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I heard this. I don't know how if it, correct it is, but uh, so this is not an ordinary history. It's a devotional history, and uh, I heard. I can't remember where if I read it or just heard it in a class that um, Lord Ramachandra was in some sense awarding seats of service and separation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It does prove that even on a material scale, or we, how we want to measure, the idea that everything has a happy ending in this world doesn't always have a happy ending. You know, I don't know. That's my own speculation. The other one is valid. Okay. Didn't she go? She didn't just kind of go off into the forest. She stayed at the ashram of Valmiki, right? And right, then right, some she had her children there and. They heard the Ramayana. Yeah, yeah. And then eventually she entered back into the earth where she came from. She appeared from the earth during that ceremony and went back to be with Lord Ram in his Nitya Leela. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, you know, Krishna left Vrindavan and the gopis, and particularly Radharani, were so called superficially unhappy for the rest of their life, but were they really unhappy? I mean, it's, I think it's kind of maybe in that category. Yes, yes, Vipralambra. That's our line. So we can end here. All glories to Lord Ramachandra. All glories to Srila Prabhupada.